Hi, um, welcome, to, uh, welcome to this video, and I want to talk about a very interesting problem I found on the MIT OpenCourseWare website. Uh, it's about uh, applications of spherical coordinates. It's in the triple, uh, triple integration section in multivariable calculus. You should check it out. Um, <laughs> MIT does a really good job of doing these educational videos. And I actually learned all of multivariable calculus in year 10, which is grade 9. Uh, basically now. It's very interesting. So first of all, let's look at the problem I want to do today. It's about finding the average distance of a point in a solid sphere of radius a. And we're given that this, uh, this point goes from the origin. So we are considering the origin to be the specific location we're trying to find the average distance from. All right, so how do we do this problem? First of all, as variables are a good thing in mathematics, so let's let d. To be honest, I don't really like using one color, so let's use different colors. So let d be the solid sphere. Okay, so D is the solid sphere, and I don't like how I write solid, so let me just change it. So let D be the solid sphere. I choose D because it's kind of like a convention in uh, multivariable calculus. You might not know this convention, you might not use this, but I use it, so I guess. Um, to be the solid sphere of radius A. So... A is basically a constant. It's not a variable. It's it's a constant, any constant. It just determines the size of the sphere in our coordinate system. All right. We want to know the average value. The formula you might need to know is that the average value, I'll call D, is 1 over V, which is the volume of the solid, times the triple integral over D, which is our solid sphere, um, times the uh, function we're trying to integrate dv, where dv is the differential volume ele element. f is the function of the distance. It might be a bit vague, but let me explain. So f is the distance from the thing we're trying to um, consider, from the lo original location. So no, note that the origin, the distance of any point to the origin, it's basically rho, right? Rho is defined to be the distance from the origin to any point. And that's what f really is. f is basically the function distance of a point to where we are uh, considering, which is the origin. So f is equal to rho. All right, so this is one over v. What's v? So v is equal to 4 over 3 pi a cubed, which is just the volume of a sphere. And this implies that 1 over v is 3 over 4 pi a cubed. Well, we can substitute that in, giving us 3 over 4 pi a cubed times the triple integral over d, which is our um, solid sphere. And f is rho, which is just the distance from the origin to any point, dv. But now we can do a bit of simplifying, right? What's dv? Well, if you know, dv is just the differential element, which is the, which is the Jacobian of that coordinate system times all of the differential elements of each variable. The, the Jacobian of spherical coordinate is rho squared sine um, phi. I'm not going to derive that in this video, but it's very interesting. You use basically the determinant, the Jacobian determinant, calculate the absolute value of that, and that's it. So we have this times d rho, d phi, d theta. Okay, now this is interesting. Be uh, I mean, not yet, because we have to figure out what's over here. What are the limits for this integral? If you remember, we're just going to use the traditional um, limits for any spherical coordinates. 
basically theta goes from zero to two pi so we're basically theta is this horizontal angle and we're from zero to two pi is basically going that way to form the whole base of the circle you can say that phi goes from zero to pi so it's this vertical angle and this goes all the way over here so it forms this kind of half tr half surface of the circle you can say and after forming this half um, of the circle you basically go around and you form the whole sphere and what are the limits for rho d rho basically we just have the radius from zero to a from the origin to the radius of radius a and we have inside the integral rho, rho cubed combining these two terms and sine phi d rho d phi d theta sorry my handwriting is getting a bit bad and don't forget to put the one over one over v over here now what do we have here well we can just calculate this integral it's just a normal iterated integral that we can calculate using brute force so this goes from 0 to 2 pi we have the same limits and simplifying this a bit we have rho over 3 we can move the sine phi out front giving us sine phi d phi directly and then d theta and then we can just do 3 over 4 pi 8 cubed copy thing uh, copying everything else and what's this thing this thing is basically rho f or, uh, rho to the fourth power over four evaluated at zero to a which is basically a to the four over four and we have sine phi d phi d theta well, notice that this a cubed and this a to the fourth, this cancels the a cubed and cancels this exponent. And therefore, as a is a constant, we can just move a out front, giving, giving us this thing. And of course, we can move the 4 out front too, which gives 16 pi in the denominator. And we have all these limits integrand, and we're just left with a sine phi d phi d theta and now we have a double integral we can solve this basically using the same method i'm just trying to use this brute force to solve this this goes from the um, this goes from zero to two pi what's the integral of sine phi it's just negative cosine evaluated at zero to pi and then we have a d theta well what's this well, if we, cop if, we, if we copy everything else and we do the 2 pi limit, we have this, uh, negative, what's cosine pi? Cosine pi is negative 1. And we have to minus another minus cosine of 0. What's cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 1 over here. And if we simplify this further, We have 1 plus 1, which is 2, and we can put the 2 out front, which gives us 6a over 16 pi, which of course you can simplify to 3 over 3a over 8 pi. And we have a d, d, d theta over here. And this basically evaluates to 2 pi. And thus, we have 3a over 8 pi times 2 pi. This directly gives us that this whole integral we're trying to do, this average distance, using just like, like a similar method to how to calculate the mean of three numbers, we got that 3a, uh, sorry, that this evaluates to 
the points cancel out. This goes to 1, this goes to 4, and we have 3a over 4. So this is the average distance from a point in a solid sphere of radius a to the origin. This is very interesting because it's so neat. There's no pi in here. And it's just a fraction. It's a normal fraction we see in everyday life. 3 over 4, 0 0.75. And this is just the power of calculus. It's able to transform everything in a solid sphere because there's an infinite number of points in a solid sphere. And we cannot just add up all the points. But using integration, we can't actually calculate uh, the sum of the distances from all the points and divide it by the volume to get the average. This is the beauty of multivariable calculus, I guess. It's very mysterious and you get this really neat value. And that's the power of math. And that's why I love math and I want to learn more things. So, so thank you for watching. I hope we have a great day.